darle buenas tardes a, a todos y a cada uno de, de ustedes y, y gracias por, por estar aquí en este, en este foro. Sabemos que el único propósito es, ¿verdad? es el, el futuro y la educación de nuestros, de nuestros hijos. Según, según el Departamento de Educación, el Distrito Escolar de Hempstead es ahora 59% latino. Para uno de cada cuatro estudiantes, el inglés es su segundo idioma, después de años de tensión racial en las escuelas. ¿Qué vas a hacer para asegurarte de que cumplan las necesidades de todos nuestros hijos? The question was, according to the Department of Education, the Hempstead School District is now 59% Latino. For one in four students, English is their second language. After years of racial tension in the schools, what will you do to make sure that the needs of all our children are met? Mr. Cook will start. One of the things that I understand is that the reason that we're doing this is that we're united for all the children. That's number one. Number two, because I have a running mate that happens to be Hispanic, I've been in a lot of situations just recently where I was a non-speaking, the only person in the room that did not speak Spanish. I know what it feels like to be in a class, I can only imagine what it feels like to be in a classroom where you have to learn, or a parent who comes up to a school and has a question and not being understood. It's important to me that we, first of all, have a dialogue. We have to open a two-channel two of communication as it relates to what's going on. A couple days ago, over at St. George's Church, we uh, sponsored a dialogue of black and brown folk, and we started the conversation. We think it's important to listen to what it is that our community has to say, especially our non-English speaking population. See, the thing, folks, is that not too long ago it was black folks who came to this country, or came to Hempstead more specifically, and we were treated a certain way because we were different. And now here it is 45, 50 years later, and it's happening again, and we're the ones that are treating people a little differently. So I understand what it's like. I understand what it's like. And I think that it's important that we open these dialogues and we do what we got to do to make certain that all our children receive the education that they Thank deserve. Thank you. I think one of the things that we, the adults, the leaders of the community have to do is that we've got to stop hitting each other, against each other, and segregating each other. I think that's very critical. Yes, there are challenges. Yes, there are issues. But when you see the 2012 report card from the New York State Department of Education, the Latinos and the Hispanics in the Hempstead School District outscore the African Americans by 54%. So the challenge really is not the educational system. The challenge is how we're going to educate, when we're going to educate, and who we're going to educate. So as we move into this next school term, let's be universal. Let's make sure that all of our children can speak English and Spanish okay. from pre-K to high school. Once we build that kind of platform, then we have broken down the walls and the barriers that have kept us separated and we can now become one Hempstead. I understand the importance of us recognizing and understanding each culture, but I find with our student population is less, uh, they're okay with what's going on. If you brought a group of young people together today, whether it be Latino, African American, European, you would find that they would have more in common than less. We as adults, we set up the walls. We prevent 
because our insecurity and what we believe and what we need to do. I understand it's a 60% uh, Latina, and I'm concerned about all of us children, Latino, European, and everything, and we have to, the mindset is key. We have to change as adults, and we're the leaders, and they will take on the role of us if we change. So let's, we, it's good to be aware of the concerns, just move forward as one and working together. My platform is working together, step by step. And we have to start somewhere. So let it start with us. Good point. It should start with us. We're parents. Irregardless of ratios or what have you, we are parents. And we have to teach our children. If you notice, all of the major exams Regions, okay, getting into the best colleges, they're in English, not in Spanish. So you have to strive to just equalize that that that, that short uh, call within the Spanish community. Work with those kids. We will work, absolutely, because we want them to pass the test. If you're an airline pilot raised in Japan, you have to take an English test to drive that airplane. So make no mistake about it, English is a major language. So let's get with it. Let's not make that an issue of division. Okay? You'll get the support. All you got to do is keep us aware of the lack of support. And then we will take it from there. But the role is that they learn English well. And that's everybody. And that should be the role of the school board. Thank you. Okay, just a reminder, um, hold your applause. The next question comes from William. I apologize. Oh, listen. It's okay. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a question for Dr. Hall. But anyway, when thinking about that question, um, the young lady said 59% are now Latinos and one in four students um, speak a second language. The question kind of goes back into the most previous question when you asked what's our two concrete visions in, in, old, in order to reach our ultimate goal, which is increasing the graduation rate. But what we must do is decide as a community to educate the children. It's unacceptable that we're not just, you know, we're just going to pass them with a, with a 65, or it's unacceptable to come into a meeting, which I sat in this very um, meeting last month when the teacher said that she did not have the resources that she needed to teach her ESL students. So, as a school board member, um, I would make sure that every thing that we vote on would be, you know, to the best interest of the students and their education. Um, like someone said um, before, with the budget, not even a million dollars towards um, curriculum. So I say that once the community decides to come together and educate the children, I think we'll just do that. We'll educate the children. In Hempstead, we are very well known for not taking advantage of our opportunities and not giving up, not giving them importance and. Um, how to prioritize the problems. On the last year budget, we cut $2 million on bilingual programs, and we increased administration salaries in $3 million. Obviously, that was helping a few, but was setting back a lot. If we already know that we have a diverse community with more than one language, because it's not only Spanish, but we have people coming just from Africa with French, we have people from Haiti with French or Creole. If we take advantage of those languages, not only the ones who are coming are going to learn English, but the kids that we are here, we promote the diversity and we address the problem. We can create kids with a very few, with a, excuse me, with a very successful results. Everybody is going to learn what we have here and what they are going to learn what the other ones are bringing. And not only we are prepared the, one, the newcomers with the English, but the residents with the more than one language to be prepared for the global economy. Because now everybody, not only the Spanish community, they need to be bilingual on either of the other language. 